Hey there, my name's Rona and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video and actually I've already recorded it. I'm just doing this one as a sort of introduction because I realised how long this video is. I just wanted to assure you that this video is going to cover everything about my journey from college all the way to university as a mature student. So that includes the access course and information and tips about doing that. It includes um, the interview and UCAS process including getting a shadowing opportunity and applying for universities um, in terms of a dietetics and um, other sort of healthcare kind of courses which you might be interested in and also goes into just how I picked which of the universities that I wanted to go into um, out of all of the options that I had and what that process was like. So stay tuned for more and I hope that you find this video helpful. Thank you so much to all of the people on my channel who have requested this video. I really appreciate your feedback and if you have any more questions or requests Quest, please don't forget to leave them down in the comments. Without further ado guys, here we go. Hey there, my name's Rona and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a well requested video about my journey from college to Surrey University. So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, as you can see, I'm doing it a little bit different today and um, it's been a long time coming to get this video done, but I finally, finally started to do it. I have been absolutely swamped with work for the second semester of my first year of university. And I wanted to go through with you guys just quickly about how I got here to this point um, from college as a mature independent student all the way into my dietetics course at the University of Surrey. So first off, being a mature student, um, the first step for me was to go to college and to get a um, qualification that would allow me to get into university. Um, most of the time, people um, who go to university will have A-levels, they'll, they'll finish A-levels and they'll go straight there, and that is one option that you can do. Um, but also, if you're a mature student or if you've already done a degree in a different kind of subject or area, you can get another qualification from college. Um, I personally went for uh, a, an access course. Um, it was an access to science course, which meant I took the subjects biology, chemistry, maths, and uh, physics. Um, although I learned a bit later that you can go on to some courses that are slightly different where they don't have a, have a physics one or they might have an extra biology or something. So it's best to really shop around, which is something that I did, uh, I didn't do. And I wish that I did do before choosing a college because I went for the one that was closest to me. Um, and I thought that that was fine. It had um, the three sciences and the maths one. So that would be great. I would highly recommend you taking one that has um, a maths uh, course in there like a math subject but it's not always a necessity you have to check the requirements of the university or the course that you want to do um, down the road um, and that can be a really big factor in what you choose so make sure you look at the requirements of your university for whatever course that you might want to do and even if it's a general look as well as look at the content that the course that you're um, the access course that you're going to do or BTEC course or whatever course it is that helps you get into university what that course covers um, especially the amount of credits it has as that will also go towards whatever you're going to be doing in the in the future at university. Now there is a quick little warning that I want to put out about taking on an access course. It does sound very simple um, that you'll just do these subjects and you'll get into university if you pass them and what and whatnot. But the difference between an access course and an A-level course is a couple of things. So um, one, you've got to double check how much um, of your um, course is uh, exams and coursework because that can differ depending on the access course or the BTEC course depending on what you're doing. The major difference especially for me and my course was that um, A-levels is usually done in two years. You have A-levels and I think AS levels I think something like that um, but this is basically two years worth of uh, study access course they shrink all of that down into one year but you're basically doing the exact amount of the exact same amount of content which means that it's extremely intense 
So I remember um, towards sort of like um, Christmas time, I realized um, after starting in September on my access course that I was having an assignment or an exam um, pretty much, well, it was mostly coursework and assignments, but um, it was very intense and I was having at least one of those every week of the entire course. So you can imagine how stressful and how much content and work you've got to absorb to be able to reach the standards that you want to. Um, so it's very intense, it's not impossible, they do um, help you out and, and it is useful to double check the reviews of the college that you go to to see what the teachers are like, how available they are and that might be a few questions that you might want to ask them um, on your uh, interview or in your induction just to see what kind of um, access to the material that you're going to have to help you as much as you can to get through that that year of hard study to get into university if that's what your goal is. Now in terms of going into a dietetics field eventually um, specifically, um, an access to science course is very highly recommended, um, especially doing things like biology, chemistry and maths. Physics is not too much of a requirement but it depends on where you go so it's worth looking that up as I said earlier. When you do biology at an access course it can be very intense, there's a lot of information to condense and to absorb um, and one of the things that you'll have to do is to do practicals. Now this is crucial. Um, and it's really important that you wrap your head around some of the things that you do in those practicals um, as not only some of those practicals will count towards your overall grade but it will be something um, a key component of the things that you'll do later on um, in the university setting practicals are something that is really kind of incorporated into the uh, incorporated into the um, university course um, and it's something that you might have to do depending on where you go but most likely most dietetic um, uh, courses will have practical elements to them that you will have to participate in which are compulsory so get used to being in a lab get used to the kind of materials that you're using the beakers the pipettes the kind of measurements that you're using and that kind of thing and also the safety elements as well as that's quite a big important as well um, especially going into a university setting where the labs are usually quite a lot bigger and you're a lot more involved in the process rather than sort of maybe sitting and watching somebody else do it or working in pairs sometimes you are required to work on your own so you've got to be able to handle that kind of thing and to, in a bigger scale. Now when I was doing my access course I didn't realise um, how difficult chemistry would be. Uh, my brain is very much geared towards being biology sort of centred um, and that's the thing that I genuinely really enjoy. Um, so chemistry was a little bit difficult, not as difficult as physics, I'm not a physics goon you know I, I, I really really struggled with the physics although I did get good grades in it for I don't know how but my point is that chemistry is really really important um, and I had no idea how um, intrinsic it is to the university courses um, that you'll do later especially in dietetics it is something so fundamental to what you're learning um, I would highly recommend taking in as much as you can um, and it ties in with a point that I'm going to make later but I just wanted to emphasize now that the biology and chemistry aspects of the course are what really really counts and all math, although maths is something that is important it, those two are the cornerstones of the degree that you'll be taking on later on so definitely pay attention to them pour your heart into it ask questions and um, really try and understand it as best you can and that is the best way I know to get the best results out of that kind of course especially in such a short time frame Now obviously for me it's been slightly different um, in the last year because I graduated from college um, in 2020 and that's when all the pandemic stuff was happening and it started off so we went to lockdown around March and I had my final kind of exams and things for certain um, topics and subjects in um, I think May, June kind of time. Um, a lot of it was starting to be online and it was extremely difficult. It had never been really done that way before. The teachers and things were completely mind blown about how to go about it. It was completely disorganized at the, at the start because it was just such, um, I guess, a new kind of um, terrain to sort of like 
manage. I don't know if I said that right, but I know what I mean. <laughs> and so when I got my results back, I wasn't entirely sure what to think. Um, I'd done very well in most things. So in my access course, we didn't have sort of um, kind of like A, B, C, D or whatever, or even the numbers. I think they're doing numbers now. I'm too old to like really keep up with that stuff, but I know they're doing numbers now for grades and I don't understand it at all. Um, but we didn't have any of that. We had um, pass, uh, fail, merit and distinction and depending on how many of the topics in a whole subject that you had how many modules that you had they would take an average of um your grades for those modules and then you would have an overall grade at the end so <laughs> um so for example in a module if you had um three different assignments and two of them were merits and one of them was a pass your overall grade would be a merit or if you had two distinctions and a at a pass your overall um, grade would be a distinction so it wouldn't be so bad if you messed up on one as long as you picked up um, the slack on the others and made the overall kind of grade um, good it would turn out fine it would be fine <laughs> so when I got my results back I got mostly distinctions I was ex extremely happy um, especially because I got a um, um, I did fairly well in kind of like the biology and chemistry and maths aspects. Physics, um, I was, I got a merit and I didn't really understand that because um, I had done extremely well even though um, I wasn't completely confident in physics at all. I had done really well up until sort of like the pandemic time um, in doing um, sort of like my grades and stuff and my coursework, I'd, I'd gotten fairly good marks. So. I went to uh, my um, course leader and I asked them to review my grades. They came back to me and said, well, yeah, these are the correct grades. Like we think this is fair. And I wasn't convinced, I genuinely wasn't. And at the time, I remember I was going to let it go. I was gonna just be like, oh, you know, I, I did well, so what am I complaining about kind of thing. And then I saw um, uh, um, an interview with a woman on BBC News um, one, of, one morning. And they were talking about um, the undervaluing of grades of uh, black and uh, minority students, um, ethnic minority students. And um, they were saying that if you if you if you didn't feel a hundred percent certain about your grades and that you feel like you you should have been given more and your course wasn't going to do anything about it there was another option which was to take it up with the exam board and they would double check and then it made me feel really good because she said um, on that interview um, you know it I know that it feels like you're being picky or, or that you you know should just uh, accept what you've been given but it doesn't give anybody any more hassle just to ask them to double check and if the if they if they do find that you have um, a higher grade and that's great but they can't give you anything less than you've already been given um, which was a really big comfort to me so I went ahead and I took it up with the exam board and I brought up my reasons why and um, it turned out a couple of months later just as I was about to start um, university I think that um, I had been undervalued for physics and I had actually just been given and I'd been given a distinction instead of a merit which I was extremely happy about and it wasn't really that I needed it for my course but it was more the principle about how much hard work and effort I'd put into this subject that I absolutely did not enjoy um, and I felt like I really deserved that grade um, and it turned out I was right so. Now I just want to go and spend some time talking to you about the process in getting from that access course and applying to the universities um, that I um, wanted to get into for dietetics, uh, especially, obviously this can apply to many different kinds of science subjects, especially if you're doing an access to science um, course, but it can apply to many different things, so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, the UCAS process is the same pretty much for everyone, um, so take what you want from this video basically and apply it to whatever you're doing right now. In my access course there would be a class that would solely be for preparing ourselves for university and although it wasn't as 
often as the other subjects obviously it's not really intense or anything like that they did have this sort of key skills kind of class and um, where they would help us to do that and um, help is a strong word they would allow us some time to do the work and to research what we needed to research which was helpful because it meant that we didn't have to spend time outside um, of the class when we should have been doing sort of coursework or revision or whatever it was so that was really good one of the first steps to do in terms of looking for a course is to actually look for a course so you go onto the internet um, you go to different university websites um, and you look up one um, well a few things actually there was a few things that I looked into before I went into sort of applying and one of those things was um, open days um, and planning out those well in advance so I would plan out as soon as the days were released that that was going to be happening I would book my ticket book my space on there and I would put that in my diary be like yes these are the days um, and that may clash with um, some of the course courses that you're doing or the classes that you're doing so be sure to make sure it doesn't clash with anything and if it does and you really want to go to it anyway make sure you give your class um, teachers or whatever that day um, plenty of notice so that you can get caught up on the work because being on an access course if you miss one day it's like you're behind on a week's worth of work basically so um, definitely make sure that you get that work done either beforehand or you get caught up after it's really really important that you don't miss anything so I booked in the open days and then the next thing that I wanted to do was go in for some tester days now this was such an invaluable experience for me um, there were many different kinds some of them where you would be um, participating participating in sort of dietetics kind of activities, um, measuring, looking at sort of different foods and seeing like trying to guess the calories and that kind of thing which is really fun and um, getting to know other students as well who wanted to do, do the same thing or were looking into doing that kind of thing. Um, at this stage you don't even have to pick dietetics if you don't want to but if you're thinking about it it's a great way to get involved and see what the profession is about what the kind of classes might be um, and what kind of content you'll be covering during that four years worth of study because it is an, a slightly longer course than a three-year degree that I know a lot of other courses have when it comes to the taster days I booked like I think five or six I went crazy with it because each of them are slightly different depending Depending on the university that you're going to and depending on the kind of course as well so I know that um, the University of Hertfordshire has a dietetics course for three years instead of the four years and I was sort of wondering why and I went to the taste day up there uh, no oh, an open day up there sorry and they were explaining how it's basically like an access course but at a degree level where they shrink the, the four the four years into a three-year course and it's very intensive um, and Going through that already at um, uh, <laughs> uh, access course, I wasn't going to do that again for degree. Like it's, and I'm so glad that I didn't because I'm already drowning in work as it is. So you have booked your taster days, you've booked your open days, you kind of have an idea of the sort of choices that you might want to make when it comes to putting your list up for UCAS. I think the um, the maximum you can pick is five and that's if you pay extra. I think, it, I'm not sure actually now I think about it. It's definitely worth checking out. I think you get three slots to start off with and if you want to go for five then you pay a bit extra. I know uh, there's some sort of extra fee to doing sort of like the full amount of choices but it's worth doing it's really it really is what i so glad that I had the option and the choice rather than such a slim kind of um, um, experience when it came to like choosing the right kind of uni for me um, and having the choices really helped me pick out the one that I really really wanted to go to um, but I'll get onto that later. So once you have the kinds of um, universities that you want to go into and the kind of course that you want to do the next step is to look at the entry requirements look at what they're looking for and also any other the special kind of um, uh, additions that they might want to um, see from you 
that will help you get into that course. And that is so, so important. I remember looking up the entry requirements for King's College London um, for their dietetics course. And I thought that was like, I was so excited about it. And I really like looked line by line through all of the requirements. And there was this bit right at the end that said um, that if you were gonna do a um, shadowing opportunity, that there was a specific form that was linked there that you had to print off and take with you to your shadowing so that they could fill it out um, like the person that you were shadowing the dietitian that you were shadowing could fill out that form and have it stamped and then bring it to your interview process and I remember that half the people there had not seen that on the entry requirement uh, on this sort of like requirements that they were looking for on the web page um, and hadn't brought one they'd done a um, shadowing but they hadn't done that extra step of really showing that that was the university that they had in mind that that's the one that they put all of their interest and time into and it wasn't the only one that I put my interest and time into but it was definitely up there and it was something that I really made sure that I checked every box for so definitely look into their web page for your for your course that you want and look at every detail click on every link look at the kind of course content and that kind of thing that might um, really catch their eye about the kind of thing that they're looking for in a student as well as um, a dietitian in the future and the kinds of th kind of person that they're looking for not just as a student as well the kind of interest that you might have that tie in with the kind of qualities and skills that a dietitian would want to have um, in their profession. Speaking of shadowing, another crucial, crucial thing to do um, when applying for dietetics or any kind of um, healthcare job especially, um, doing a shadowing of uh, someone who's already in that job or profession that you're looking to go into is extremely important. Um, not only does it give you insight into what the daily life of that profession would be like, but it also gives you an opportunity to ask questions and make connections with people in that industry for the future, which is something that I did and I was really, really pleased about. Um, it is very extremely, extremely difficult to get a, um, a, a shadowing opportunity or a placement somewhere. So you have to really put in the work. Um, you write sort of like a cover a letter, maybe put in um, a little bit about yourself, really describe what you're trying to do and how you'll um, sort of what your limits are so when you go into the into the shadowing what your um, expectations would be and what um, you can bring to the table and that doesn't mean that you have to do any of the work or anything like that but it means that you're you're a great listener or that you can um, that how passionate you are about the job and how much you want to take away from that experience something that will help you get ahead in the future in that profession and and hopefully when you do that kind of of extra work they will see how passionate you are about it and be more likely to take you on into their into their practice or into their hospital and show you around and, and you know have you follow them throughout the day um, and you can do um, sort of one day which is more than enough if you can get one day that's perfect don't worry about getting more if you can do more in other settings even better so I did mine in a clinic um, and it was a pediatric uh, clinic which was amazing um, but the thing that really clinched it for me was that I got to work with two dietitians on the same day and um, so I got to see a slightly different way of um, handling patients um, especially of different ages as well the different kinds of clients that would come in and it gave me some variety when I spoke about it in my letters um, and my cover letter and things not cover letter my personal statement um, to my universities and I would be able to pick up on that and um, kind of aspect of it to show how um, diverse of an experience that I had and how much I took away from it as well and how that would also help me in the future Something that I definitely took away from having that experience with the King's College kind of form that they asked to fill out and um, when you took to the dietitian that you were shadowing was that I wish I'd have done that um, on my own. If I didn't have that form, it would have been really helpful to come up with my own form and say sort of like, 
Um, these are the tasks that this person did while shadowing. These are the comments that this dietitian had about their experience working with me. Um, these are the key skills that she demonstrated while she was there. Anything to get you to be um, standing out in their eyes when they look at that and be like, wow, this person has really gone through the effort of really sort of um, putting value in this experience. And this is all the things that they gained from it on paper. And somebody else in the profession already has gone through the effort of really backing this person up. And that means a lot to these um, sort of universities and what they're looking for. They don't want somebody who is doing this on a whim. It is four years worth of work. You are going to be then accredited by the HCPC, which is a very, you know, big deal in terms of like, um, monitoring and um, keeping up the standards of dietetic practice around the country um, and they want somebody to represent their ideals and someone who's passionate about what they're doing um, especially as the subject is so broad that you have to have a kind of intrinsic kind of um, love for the subject and to, to appreciate how vast and how um, detailed it can get. <laughs> So you've done your, what have you done? <laughs> Open days, your taster days, you've done your personal statement, you've done shadowing opportunities and got the forms for that as well, all finished. Um, the next thing that you're gonna do is do well at college. That is one of the top things that you can do is to get those grades um, because the entry requirements will be one of the th first things that you see on their um, webpage of whatever university you go you go to. Um, it will be uh, a certain cutoff point and depending on the university that can differ as well. Some require AAB, some require ABB um, in terms of A-level grades, but also when you look at the access um, kind of course um, equivalencies it should be on the web page if they're not call them double check triple check to make sure that you know where the mark is for you to get into them and it's better to do as well as you can so you have as many options as you can rather than sort of see how things go and then end up with maybe only one or two options at the end of the day or maybe even just one and um, so double triple check what they're asking for and really try hard at every course piece of coursework every exam that you yeah, that you take especially in that access course because it's it's not as um I'm not going to say it's not as uh, recognised as, as A levels because it absolutely is. There's no kind of um, kind of like uh, quality difference in between them. The only thing is is that you are doing it in half the time. So in terms of your knowledge base, it's going to be um, very quick, and and so you might not absorb everything as much as say an A level student might do, as they've got double the time to experience and really take that in and ask questions and that kind of thing so use your grades to reflect how hardworking you are how much you can learn quickly that kind of thing and, and, and use that as best as you can to give yourself the best advantage that you can when going to apply to these universities through UCAS it's also worth noting when you go to your access course to check with your tutor or your course leader who will be writing your um, kind of cover letter um, in terms of your UCAS application. So when you make your UCAS application, somebody from your college um, or A-level course or access course, BTEC course, whatever you're doing, will write a letter to accompany your um, applications, which the university will read through. And it will just be a brief letter describing you as a person or like your work ethic or certain traits that you might have that really stand out to them. Um, ideally, they are supposed to show you off. I, for example, didn't have the best one. Oh, it was good, but it was actually um, a blanket statement that my tutor, course leader, used for the entire class. And we all had the exact same one. They literally just changed um, our names and um, he's for she's. That's literally what he did. Um, so <laughs> it wasn't personalized at all, but somehow it, it worked and I still managed to get in. So maybe that's not the be all end all of um, 
of your application so don't worry about it too much but it just might be worth noting who's going to be doing that so you can really show them um, how passionate you are about that particular subject how hard working and that kind of thing throughout the year instead of getting them um, when they're already being bombarded at the end of the year about will you write my letter and what are you going to write here's some stuff that makes me look good can you please include it because they'll most likely get that a lot anyway so it's better for you to shine throughout the year rather than right at the last moment and that was something that I thought um, would be a helpful tip for people who are just starting out which is I hope I hope is helpful So after all of this, you finally send off your application, you work hard and you do all of the um, final exams if you have final exams or you finish off all your coursework if you have coursework and then you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and um, it's stressful but the big day comes and you finally get your results um, and that is I hope the biggest relief that you have all year round, that it's the biggest sort of day for you because you've just smashed it and things are going so well for you because now you have all the options that you wanted to. All of the doors um, are open and this is where the crucial kind of nitpicking really really starts and for me this is actually the fun bit because for me I got into every university that I applied to I applied to um who where did I apply to uh, I applied to King's College London I applied to University of Surrey I applied to University of Hertfordshire I applied to London Metropolitan um University um where else did I apply to I think that might be it I think those are the main ones before that I um uh, apply to but I'm thinking that there's probably one that I'm forgetting but I didn't go for it so oh well um, those are the ones that I was considering the most and I had a real struggle weighing up which ones that I would um, want to go to and actually this process started way before I got my results because there was no way I was going to be able to pick apart every bit of these university courses in just that one or two months before um, the courses started in September for when I got my results in sort of August time I think so it's literally one month um, that you have to decide and it wasn't enough time for me so I started doing that um, kind of elimination process a lot earlier say about April May time and um, just before sort of final exam season sort of settled in um, and that was a really big deal it was a really big deal and there were so many things that I had to weigh up and I'm just gonna go through a few of them now with you just to give you some ideas about what you should be considering when applying to university so as I mentioned earlier the first thing that I looked at was the um, length of the course so usually they're four years um, and one of those years has sort of got like a big placement in there and um, there was one which was the University of Hertfordshire where you had a three year, co three year course um, and as I said the reason for that is it's sort of like squished down from four years to three years it's exactly the same degree so you don't lose anything from going there but it is intensive and I think as well with that course um, some of the timetabling was a lot different so instead of having the whole summer off like a regular course would so you'd have sort of like from July, June, July time all the way up to September and then you'd start in September again for the next year uh, some of that was shorter so you'd have a shorter summer so that you'd be able to do the kind of um, work that you wouldn't be able to fit in um, over that four year period sort of thing instead of doing a four years into the three I know what I mean so that was a big no-no for me I just needed to have some breathing room after doing such an intensive access course and I wanted to really focus in on the work and understand it and really make it part of um, the reason why I wanted to be a dietitian was to find answers and to find um, nutritional truths and um, factual information and the science behind uh, nutrition and 
I didn't think I would get everything that I needed to if I rushed it and I really wanted the time for it to sink in um, and sort of become a part of me rather than sort of in my mind I would have been rushing it if I'd have done that three year course although for some people that's actually better um, and I know some people that I went to the interview with who are extremely keen on doing a three year course rather than a four year course because it's the exact same degree so really weigh up what's best for you and what you you think you can handle and actually ask questions even ask to speak to um, a current student if you want to as well just to see what their experience is like you can literally do anything you can ask for anything so if you have the idea to to do it ask it's fine they're not going to think any less of you for wanting to make an informed decision if anything it will make them recognize you more as a, a standout student who really cares about what you're doing rather than just check it, ticking a box and being like yeah that one will do the next thing that I looked into was the facilities. Now, as I said earlier as well, um, practicals are a big part of dietetics and science subjects, especially um, if you have things involving biology or chemistry. Um, definitely if you're doing a chemistry course, you wanna look at the labs, you wanna look at the kind of facilities they have. and. It was really hard because all the, the three choices that I had left, because I'd already ruled out um, University of Hertfordshire, even though that was the closest one to my family, I decided not to go for it. Um, I ruled out that one and I had these three universities that had these wonderful labs. Um, and these facilities that I could really see myself using in the future and learning about and really making use of during my time there. And even looking into the future of sort of like my maybe master's degree, like what kind of facilities there would be there. And that's another thing that you might wanna look into as well is whether or not these universities have um, master's degrees that you can um, progress and what comes after your bachelor's degree. I know it seems like a very long way in the future and it's not something that you have to look into but it's something that I wanted to look into because I have big dreams and big ambitions and I wanted to be prepared and make sure that I was going for the right university that would um, facilitate my career rather than just my degree. Another aspect of, of university life that I was looking into and sort of helping me weigh my decision uh, making process was um, the environment that I was going to be in and this was the real clincher for me because I have anxiety and so being in big crowds um, having it very fast paced and sort of in your face a lot of the time I can handle in short bursts that's not too much of a problem but when it's constant it becomes a real issue for me and although I love the adrenaline rush every now and again it's not the environment that is um, inducive to um, good study practices for me it's something that would um, I feel hinder my well-being and my health in the long term and so this was a crucial point that I wanted to make sure that I got right and one of the um, things that really decided it for me was that the University of Surrey is such a beautiful place it has the most gorgeous scenery everything is chill it's laid back and it's not to go 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 all the time so with um, King's College London although it is one of the top universities in the world the, th the, the main reason I didn't go for it is because it's in central London and I can see myself getting on the tube every day to go there or getting on a train or going through London when it's during the busy times or going out for lunch and things where everything was was all over the place like there's like three different campuses and although like you will be mainly focused in one or two of those and um, the travel aspects of it was just too much for me and it was so important for me to um, uh, consider that because everybody I knew including my teachers when I said that I'd gotten into Kings was like you need to go there that is like the only option why are you even considering anywhere else and it was really hard for me to sort of weigh up my own personal needs with the expectations of other people and the kind of prestige and sort of reputation that King's has and um, another thing that what clinched it for me is that King's also has an amazing master's uh, program for um, public health and that is something that I wanted to go into in the future so it really helped me sway my decision by thinking okay well I can do the really like um 
core kind of work and the intensive kind of work and the building blocks of my future at Surrey where I know I'm going to be more comfortable and I know I'm going to take in the information the best and then maybe one day after I've got some experience and after I've got my degree then I can always go to King's later it's not the end of the world so you know it was a really big decision for me but that's where I decided to go to and I genuinely couldn't be more happier with my choice and I'm just so happy I didn't go for something that was um, not right for me and you might be completely different you might think that actually that kind of pacing and that kind of um, environment is the best way for you to be engaged in your work and it actually helps you become motivated and the environment and that kind of thing is really for you and that's great I would suggest going down there for the open days and all that sort of stuff and really taking it in and imagining yourself as a student there and what kind of um, feeling it gives you and that really helps me out so give that a try maybe another thing that really um helped me make my decision was actually looking at where you would be going for your placement now each of the universities that do dietetics courses have different sort of catchment areas where you may be going for your placements um for the surrey university you have um three placements a b and c one is actually in your first year so i'm going to be going on my placement over the summer for two weeks and then it gradually increases the longer you are on the course um, so it's kind of a big deal it's it's where you're going to get your hands-on experience and where you're going to put your um, learning into practice and really gain the most sort of um, experience before you go into the actual job before you actually get hired by somebody to be a dietitian or be whatever um, you're going to whatever you're going to do because um, I know that some other um, uh, courses like radiography and that kind of thing also have placements check with your university on that sort of list um, on the website about the course content what kind of placements they will be having uh, how long they'll be and also the catchment area this was a really um, difficult decision to make as well between Kings and Surrey because with Kings they have the whole of South London and um, they have a sort of um, agreement I think with the London Met University where one of them takes the top half of London and one of them takes the bottom half of London to make sure that everybody gets on a placement and that it's fair whereas Surrey you could go anywhere in the south of England which means that there are places um placements in say like the Isle of Wight that you could go or Brighton um, and when you go on these placements yes you can get reimbursed for some of the money that you spend on doing that so eg like travel or accommodation but it becomes as it comes after so you get reimbursed you have to put the money up front to be able to go and do those things so that might be something if you're a mature student that you have to think ahead about and plan for because it's definitely something that I'm having to do is plan for um, my travel costs, my accommodation costs. Some of them will offer accommodation, but you won't know until you get the placement what that will be. So in terms of Surrey, they give you um, three options, uh, like three choices. So you'll, the, you, sorry, you'll have many options, like a list of options. And then you have your first choice, second choice, third choice, sort of like with UCAS, with your choices of university. And there is no guarantee you will get your first choice or your second choice. They will try to get you your third if you can't be accommodated for the first two. But again, there's no guarantee. So you have to weigh up what you're willing to do. At least, at least for me, I knew that if I went for Kings, at least then I'd be in the same sort of area. I'd be in London. I'd be in the south of London where I kind of knew um, I was more familiar with and there'd be less travel. With Surrey, there is a much wider net about where you could go, but there's also some positives to that as well in terms of um, looking at different kinds of cultures, different kinds of um, uh, places and how they run things. It's really about gaining some experience because you don't know as a dietitian exactly where you'll end up either there could be a job um in the north of england that you really want and you might have to move for and if you're not um sort of used to hopping around if you like sort of stay in your kind of zone not that that's not impossible but it's more helpful to be a student who is open to new experiences and willing to learn as much as you can from doing a variety of different things than stay 
staying in a very small bubble. Don't put yourself in a box. Um, try to experience new things and learn from them and be open to it. But if it's something that you genuinely can't see yourself doing or you're not able to do, then definitely take that in consider <laughs> into consideration when choosing the course that you want to do because it might be really important later. I know there is a lot of interest and questions about the interview process because that was the thing for me that I was most terrified about when I was applying and doing all of the, the kind of prep work to get into university. So I just want to add in a quick thing about interviews. Um, I can't say too much. The reasoning behind this is because some universities will make you sign a disclosure form saying that you cannot disclose the exact interview process, you're not allowed to talk about it, otherwise it gives some people an unfair advantage over the people who are going in. So I have to give you brief but helpful tips of what to do and what to how to prepare for those kinds of inter interviews to give you the best chance that you can to make an impression. The first thing that I think is really really helpful would be know the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian. It is crucial, it is extremely crucial that you know what a dietitian does and but the, the thing that I think really helped me to kind of um, show how interested I was in dietetics and show that I knew the difference was looking at how vast dietetics can be. It is a completely um, wide open field in terms of what you are able to do. I would recommend looking into all the different types of dietitians, the different branches of medicine and how dietitians um, are, um, are working in those kinds of fields um, and maybe even look into um, the day-to-day -day activities of a dietitian as well to show that you really know what you're talking about, that you really understand what it is you're signing up for because as I said four years is a long time to pour your heart into something and get a degree and then go into the practice to realize that it's not for you so really make them see that you know what a dietitian does if you have a specific kind of dietetic um uh, fields that you're interested in that's great do more research into that really bring that into the forefront if not say that i was the same so I looked at how vast dietetics was and I was terrified. I was like, I have no idea what kind of dietitian I was, I'm gonna be. How am I supposed to choose right now and let them know? Because some people in the interview process was like, this is the kind of dietitian that I wanna be and I wanna go into this kind of thing and I know all about it already. And I was like, okay, <laughs> well, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't know that yet. That's completely fine and it's actually a good thing. Um, if you don't know yet um, and you're willing to learn about all of the different kinds of dietitians and all the different kinds of aspects of dietetics that you can get into and get excited about it and say, I'm super excited about all of the different options that I have before me in, in this one subject, in this one profession, look how vast it is and I can tell you about this kind of thing and this kind of thing and this kind of thing and I don't know which one I'm going to choose yet but I'm excited to learn about all of them and really get some experience and I hope that your university can give that to me. Another key part of the interview that I would say from my personal experience would be um, a good deal of um, self-reflection. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you generally do have to sort of think about it. So the kinds of things that you would have in any kind of interview, so for example, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, what do you do well as a student? Um, that kind of thing. Um, and really make a case for yourself as they say, sell yourself as best you can, be positive about yourself and hopefully that will translate to them and they will be more willing to take you on because they'll see that you're somebody who can self-reflect, who can learn from their experiences, which is really crucial, especially when you go on sort of like a placement um, kind of course where you might have to do a lot of things where um, you learn from experience and that's something that really um, shows because in placement you will have to do self-reflection 
self-reflection activities so that's a big part of it and even as a dietitian you have to do self-reflection you have to go to um sort of meetings with other dietitians to um describe like your clients and the kind of choices that you made and, and really work together to come up with a consensus of how you could have done that better or what you might want to do in the future or what might work best for that particular patient so self-reflection is a big one my final point in terms of interview tactics and sort of preparation would be um to <laughs> i don't know how somebody somebody actually told me this um when i was at a um a king's college london uh, open day and i don't think they were supposed to um and i'm not sure if i'm supposed to so i'm gonna like dance around it a little bit but i hope that it, you still get something from it so a key point for me um especially for that interview would have been to um really um understand the content of the work that i was already doing and how it linked in to the work that i was doing would have been doing in the future at a dietetics university degree that was really crucial some people get on to say a nutrition course i know nutrition students who are just doing nutrition and they are overwhelmed by the amount of science there is they have done say maybe a sports kind of degree or something before that or sports course or sports at a level they go into nutrition and they are overwhelmed by the content of chemistry and biology that there is and um they don't know what to do with themselves because they had no idea and it's all sort of like hitting them really really hard so obviously during um a levels or the access course you're going to be doing science most of the time um but it's really about finding those links that make um that relevant to your university degree on your university degree homepage on the website for that um, university you can see the course content every module that you'll be studying in your first second third and fourth year if you're doing a fourth year and you could see all of the things that they're going to talk to you about go through it see what it is exactly they're going to be teaching you what the steps are and then try and link it to what you're learning now and see where the, the commonalities are and what you can take to the interview to say this is something something that I'm doing at the moment that I know we're going to be doing in this course later and I'm really looking forward to it because x y and z really show an interest in what you're going to be doing because it's something that they're going to be looking for and also it's important for you you want to be able to go to a course that you're genuinely interested in and what you actually want to know so that when it comes to doing the work and it does pile up trust me it doesn't feel that much like work because it's something that you genuinely want to know about um and that's i think that's it <laughs> thank you so much for listening to me i know i've been talking for a little while um but i really hope that i've answered some of your questions about going from college to university and I've tried to cover as many of those points that I uh, can but if you have any other questions about this topic in particular please leave them in uh, the comments down below leave me a message and I will get back to you as soon as I can as I've said the work is piling up but I will get round to it I promise <laughs> I was really hoping to do um, sort of like a few kind of lecture bites. Um, I say lecture bites all the time now because that's what we're doing at the moment. They, they, they can't do in-person lectures so they record them and put them on in like a small bits and they call them lecture bites. I'm not, I meant video series. <laughs> And this video series is going to be about a bunch of different things to do with university in general and the University of Surrey where I chose to go and the experiences that I've had here so far. I was really thinking about doing a video about the lessons that I've learned from semester one um, because there were a few and I thought maybe if you're interested in that give this video a like, comment down below, let me know what you'd want to know. I know there's also been some interest in in terms of housing, in terms of um, uh, Band, band rooms um, in terms of like the accommodation here at the University of Surrey and comparing that to private accommodation which I'm actually looking into at the moment so I do have a little bit of insight into that if you wanted to know more again just let me know in the comments leave this video a like as it really helps out my channel and thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, I hope to see you soon if you haven't already do subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with my videos and any other um, of this video series that I'm hopefully going to be continuing with. And I think that's it. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next one. See ya!